about giving people choices. If they want this, it should be available to them. Even if a num the vast majority of medical associations say that actually this form of, of, of alleged counseling or alleged therapy is actually can be harmful to kids, there's a task force of the American Psychological Association that said that efforts to change sexual orientation are not only unlikely to be successful, but they involve a risk of harm. The American Psychiatric Association basically says the same thing, that poten potential risks of depression, anxiety, self-destructive behavior. Do you really think that kids should be subjected to that based on what maybe their parents want? Even though it's been 45 years since the American Psychiatric Association determined that homosexuality is not an illness that can be cured, an estimated 700,000 adults in the U.S. have received some kind of conversion therapy. I just said, you know, God, I'm tired of fighting and I'm tired of asking you to take this away from me. So I told him, I think I'm gay. First of all, we took him to the doctor and had his hormones checked. You know, that's how naive we were. Then we called the largest Southern Baptist Church in Memphis, and they said, oh yes, you're so lucky. We have a unit right here in Memphis, and it's called Love in Action, and they have an 84% cure rate. And, I'm and so he said, um, we're going to start with some prayer and counseling. That then escalated to putting ice blocks on his hands for hours at a time while he looked at same-sex images. In this case, it wasn't even pornography. It was just men hugging each other or touching each other. And then they would remove them if it was a man and woman together. You get the idea. Uh, the ice blocks lasted for a few days. Then they wrapped wire coils around his hands and attached it to a car battery. And each time they showed male-female, nothing would happen. If it was male-male contact, they would electrocute his hands. This didn't work. So at the end of the program, a few weeks later, they began inserting needles under his fingernails, then attached to a car battery. God, I'm tired of fighting and I'm tired of asking you to take this away from me. I've asked you a thousand times, take these feelings away from me, and you won't, and you haven't. I'm going to do what I need to do and you do what you need to do, and that's the deal. Fix society. Those are the haunting final words of the suicide note that's getting national attention tonight. They were posted online by a 17-year-old in Ohio, a message that went up after that teenager was already dead. Richard Reeve is at the live desk to explain. Rich? Yeah, Morris, it was a compelling and heartbreaking note from the 17-year-old. She called herself Leela and said she'd rest in peace if, quote, transgender people are treated like humans with valid feelings and human rights. The story is spreading quickly on social media and advocates hope it will bring about social change. 17-year-old Joshua Alcorn was born a boy, but in a suicide note, she said she was a female and wanted to be known as Leela. She said she knew when she was as young as three that she was different. Last Sunday, Leela, who lived outside Cincinnati, committed suicide by jumping in front of a moving tractor trailer. In a blog posting, she said, please don't be sad, it's for the better. The life I would have lived isn't worth living because I'm transgender. Occasionally he'd tell me like, oh, I feel like I'm something else or I'm someone else and wouldn't go too far with it. You know, I'd feel like it was something, it was really personal to him. Friends say Leela was accepted here at King's High School, but her parents sent her to conversion therapy, which seeks to change sexual orientation through counseling. Where they try to guilt her into stepping back from doing this. Leela's parents have declined to speak with reporters. Before her death, she posted how her mother and father wanted her to be a, quote, perfect little straight Christian boy. They've got to love this precious child of, of theirs. You know, family rejection is the number one cause of LGBT youth homelessness. Leela also blogged that she hoped transgender people wouldn't be treated as she was. Advocates believe the suicide of this teen may be a turning point. The humanity of transgender people now is on the radar and we're going to be considered just like everybody else. From the 17-year-old, a final sentence. My death needs to mean something, she wrote. Fix society. I really wish that I could have been there for him. I feel like a pretty bad friend. 
since her death, transgender advocates have called for a national law to end conversion therapy. Nearly 80,000 people have signed an online petition. Group Gender Rights Maryland says about 41% of transgender people have at one time or another considered suicide. I was hiding, I was singing at church, I was a missionary. I did everything to try to be the best Christian. And I would just wake up and I was still gay. He said, I am gay. I know I am gay. And I just turned and looked to the side and tears just rolling down my face. And I looked at him and I said, Adam, a man shall not lay with another man. A method of therapy that resolves for my clients who don't believe they're born gay, the underlying emotional wounds that have created those feelings. So the short story is, when you resolve the emotional wounds and unfulfilled needs in childhood that have caused these issues for them, the homoerotic feelings tend to dissipate automatically, spontaneously on, on their own, over time. We believe that homosexuality is a symptom of early childhood trauma. We get the client to address those traumas and they will dis experience a diminishment in their same-sex attraction. But the most unbearable part, Cooper says, was a backpack filled with rocks that she was forced to wear all day, every day. Do you have any idea how much weight you were carrying? I think about 40 pounds. And the point of the backpack was to represent the physical burden and pain of being gay. Because they believe that homosexuality is um, an illness, a mental health condition, they believe that that comes as a result of some sort of early childhood trauma. So the first thing they do is to look into that trauma. They come into the room with the agenda that you have been damaged, you have been wounded. So they will, they will look for it until they find it. And so, for example, in my case, the therapist asked me if I'd been sexually abused. I said no. She said, I think it will be there. I don't want to talk to you. Why not? I'll tell you that because I don't like you. Get away from me. Is this how you treat the young this boys? This is how I treat you. Get away from me. Is this how you Get treat the young boys? Get away from me, sir. Uh, in my case, uh, I'll be blunt, he had me bottle my feces and he told me I needed to do this to be reminded where, how gay men had sex and this would correct my sexuality, which of course only increased uh, self-hatred and the shame, uh, not coincidentally around this time during the therapy, privately, I started cutting, uh, I had no cutting other way yourself. of it cutting myself privately. So were you having suicidal thoughts going through this therapy, supposed all therapy? All the time, all the time, all the time. But I listened to what the doctor told me I needed to do. There, there didn't seem to be on any other option at, my, at that point in my life. And also, this, these psychotropic medications, incredibly powerful. I had no real rational thinking that process at this point. Just a few months later, at the circuit courthouse in Mobile, Alabama, we would see a much different William Knott, the Christian pastor now on trial for child abuse. I mean, don't get me wrong, these are not religious people. God, I'm tired of fighting and I'm tired of asking you to take this away from me. What are some of the common um, long-term effects you see from people who have undergone conversion therapy? Are we talking well, we depression? Well, we instantly recognize each other. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a... You call each other survivors. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a heavy term. Yeah, it is. It, well, we did, and many of us didn't survive. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of suicides. Five years since the American Psychiatric Association determined that homosexuality is not an illness that can be cured, an estimated 700,000 adults in the U.S. have received some kind of conversion therapy.
sexual orientation is neither innate nor is it immutable. And so the scientific basis for this memorandum. BBC, could you please leave? No professional does conversion therapy. That's an LGBT activist term that's used to demean uh, people who do this work. Um, it, it suggests that we send people to pray away the gay boot camps, like in the movie Boy Erased, and it's the exact opposite that happens in real therapy. Many of them will move to a, a position of management of those feelings, but they don't. It's, just well, it's not suppression, can it's transformation. Some, can you give us some numbers? Uh, how many have changed? I suppose this year I would say I have seen three. But you know what? You have to wait. There's a, there's a test of time. There's a maintenance issue. We're not talking about flipping a switch. I think that some people who probably would have come out like I have done earlier in their lives may have stayed in the closet longer because of the work that I did. Do you, that do you believe people can be converted? No, I don't. Right, so, that, so it is a sham then, isn't it? The, but the guy leading the business of trying to convert gay people has now admitted you can't be converted. That is purely the, the purest definition of a sham, surely.